we are at the Citrus Club for our weekly series with Russ, um, Russ Scala, who I had to think about it for a minute. Wow, can you tell it's been a morning already? Everybody and everybody has a story, what your doctors won't tell you or don't tell you. Uh, we are shooting in the lounge, so let us know you can hear us or see us. I've got a mic ready and queued up if we need it, but I don't think we do. Hey, Rob, just give us a thumbs up. If I have to move it closer, I will, and maybe that's what I'll do. Uh, nice jacket. Thanks, Rob. Gert's watching. Appreciate that. Yeah, I got to go coral today. I don't know what's happening. Um, but, yeah, we're out in the lounge. I haven't been out in the lounge in so long, so I had to like get a whole table. But look at that lighting, man. So welcome, Russ. Welcome. How are you doing, Garth? I'm fantastic today. How about you? Good, good. Hanging in there. Good, 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 good. So we have a lot to talk about. I posted some of the things that we were going to talk about on the show. Calories, not a calorie, obesity. But we have the New York Times today, which I didn't want to put in the comments because I didn't want to cease and desist. Um, and there are so many good articles today. So we thought, well, we could talk about some of the a calorie is a calorie, but we could also talk about... Uh, the cool articles that are in the New York Times. Obviously, and this is in the Science Times section. Um, so welcome, Russ. Hey, brother. Hey. Okay. All right, so let's talk. The first thing, though, I want to talk about is the very first topic, a calorie is not a calorie, and then we'll get to the New York Times because once I posted that this morning, I had a whole bunch of people go, what do you mean a calorie is not a calorie? Um, what do you mean that it's not the same? What do you mean men and women? We all know men and women lose weight differently. Um, I've had my wife say that. I could go on the same diet as her and lose twice as much weight in a shorter amount of time. Uh, but talk a little bit about that. Give them some background on a calorie is not a calorie because I think people think that's crazy. If it's 100 calories, it should be the same across the board, and that's not true. Right, folks, think about this. We're all biochemically unique. And fat distribution is genetically determined, hormonally regulated. So what we got to do is we have to change the chalkboard in our head. We got to wipe it clean and, and give you some new tools. Now, here's an example. Eric Topol wrote a book called The Patient Will See You Now. I and, love that title. Yeah, right? You it's know so I great. Do. That book so, is excellent. So, so this way. book, folks, is going to say what Ted and I are trying to do. People are going to form communities. They're going to run their own lab work. They're going to heal themselves, or in this case, lose weight, all without a doctor involved. And that's sort of the communities that Ted and I want to create with you. So we want to educate you. There's been 76,000 diets in the last, since the early 1900s. I think I've tried 75,999 right. of them. If we, if, if, if we understand that women and men lose body fat differently, um, if we start to understand the difference between um, burning fat and keeping muscle, I'm actually training coaches right now to help people shift their metabolism into fat burning. And there's ways that we can do that. Um, for instance, a lot of the big weight loss programs, the New York Times four days ago had a big uh, article on how Weight Watchers is changing their business model. All right, so what was that about? Because they had actually made some adjustments to their business model very recently. Like they, you could eat some carbs on that. Yeah, no, no, they, they're, they're big. They're, Weight Watchers thinks, you know, again, everybody's biochemically unique, unique, unique folks. God knows I am. So, so if, if I get somebody on a weight loss program and I test them nutritionally and hormonally, we may have to correct things. Um, for instance, a, a woman may have a low thyroid, okay? Or here's one, folks, think about this. And you could go to the Russ Scala YouTube channel for this one. Men and women can be estrogen dominant. So if your estrogen levels are elevated in men and women, that'll slow your thyroid down and it'll stop fat burning. Also in 96, remember I was a triathlete? Yes. Okay, so I, there was a group of us that were, were, were gaining body fat doing 20 hours of training a week. I rode over 400 miles a week, which is not a lot when you, I mean, it is a lot, but I was riding 400 miles a week, running and swimming, and my body fat level was through the roof. So we started studying in 96 why um, endurance athletes are crossing the finish line after a marathon and they're still chubby. So that's on my YouTube channel as well. So understand that estrogen dominance can slow fat burning in men and women. We have a little enzyme in our body called aromatase. It could take our natural testosterone and convert it to estrogen. So for some of our patients that see my doctors, if it's a man or a woman that have high estrogen, a woman has three different estrogens in her body, estradiol, estrone, and estriol. If some of those, if she's estrogen dominant, then we, we, we could block the estrogen. If a male is estrogen dominant, he, we could block the estrogen so we could start the weight loss process. It's not about so calories. men can have estrogen? Yeah, it's, it's on my YouTube channel. Men have, I've tested thousands of men that were estrogen dominant. So they're, they're not going to lose weight 
because they have high estrogen levels. And a lot of these testosterone clinics are giving men testosterone and it's not working because the men have high estrogen levels. So just giving them testosterone or someone testosterone doesn't negate the estrogen that's in their body, no, no. it just adds testosterone. Right, and, every, and remember, testosterone, if it's given at the wrong dose, will convert to estrogen. You know, on a cellular level, uh, and uh, physically, if you look at it under the microscope, testosterone and estrogen are very similar. So, you know, we know that men and women have the same hormone levels, just at different degrees. So if, if fat distribution is genetically determined and hormonally regulated, like some people have lower body fat, some people have upper body fat, that has to do with insulin, that has to do with estrogen. When a woman's pregnant, estrogen could go up or down and it positions the body fat at different locations. Nobody talks about that. A lot of overweight people that I work with, they feel discouraged and like it's their fault. It's not their fault. I got a lot of clients that are addicted to carbohydrates, okay? And and it's, it's about the brain chemistry. I might be one of, I grew up Italian, so pastas and breads. It's terrible. No, I know. I'm no, no, not it's okay. No, no, it's okay. But I have issues. I think a lot of people are like when they t talk a little bit about when you go completely cold turkey from something. Is that a positive thing? Like you know how you go cold turkey from smoking? That's different. But is it the, or is it the same? Like if somebody completely cuts all carbs out of their no, diet. no, no. Here's here's the deal. Here's the deal. Now imagine, folks. I was attached to the SWAT team. I was a paramedic to responding to emergency calls. So I was surrounded by people that were elevating their serotonin levels with carbohydrates. Either I was running them rescue calls or I was like eating pizza and drinking. So that was, and, and that wasn't healthy. So what we know is that certain people are carbohydrate sensitive, which means when I meet somebody and I'm dropped into the second act of a third act play and they went through a divorce or, or their job is killing them or they have a kid that's addicted to heroin, I'm not gonna cut the carbs out of their diet because the carbs are elevating their serotonin levels and right at this time they feel good. Now, once I balance out their brain chemistry with testing and, and our doctors, then I can slowly rotate the carbs out of their diet and then start the weight loss from half Do you rotate years. all carbs out? No, no, I think the, the poor man's Prozac is white rice, pasta, you know, the simple carbs that kind of light up our, neuro, our neurotransmitter serotonin. Now understand this, I'm not shooting down carbs, but if you want to lose body fat, a half a slice of bread can shut off fat burning in some people. But also, I'll take a page out of the book called Potatoes Not Prozac, okay? People, there's a woman that was an addiction counselor that gave people sw sweet potatoes at night to help them go to level four REM sleep at night, to help knock them out at night. So carbohydrates are a tool. Now, you, you never want to cold turkey anything. You just want to find a good coach. You want to find, you know, get your lab work done so we have a baseline so we could, we could pull the puzzle pieces together. And, and that's why I, I, I have the estrogen dominant videos on the Russ Scali YouTube channel, folks. Watch that for three minutes. Watch what estrogen does to, and, and children, a lot of kids. I met with a family last week and um, they, they want their, 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 their son to lose weight and they couldn't wrap their head around some of the facts that he may have elevated estrogen levels. Um, he went to the endocrinologist at, at Arnold Palmer and they're taking the family down this road and, and, and the kid just takes in too many simple carbohydrates and he's elevating his insulin level storing body fat. What's a simple carb, like potatoes, like, Yeah, like, like potatoes, white rice, and pasta. And for this little guy, he needs, you know, he needs a little bit more protein and a little bit more essential fats. Because if you eat fat, for instance, let, 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 let's look at this, folks. You could eat cornflakes, it'll skyrocket your, your, your insulin levels. But if you have ice cream with the fat in the ice cream, it won't elevate your insulin levels. So the glycemic index of the food that you're eating can, can, comp, can elevate insulin levels and you store body fat for hours. So just knowing that fat acts as a control rod, fat is very important. Uh, we know on a cellular level when DNA unzips, you need essential amino acids from protein, essential fatty acids, but there's no such thing on a cellular level for essential carbohydrates. Now that's, that's hard for people to wrap their head around. Sure. Physicians aren't trained in this, folks. That's why, you know, get, getting back to Eric Topol's book, we want to form communities, educate you, share information with your neighbors, drill down on some stuff, learn what blood work you need, and, and that way you get out of the railroad tracks. Right. You know, you get out of the railroad tracks. So a lot of people asked, because it's been two weeks, and thank you guys for being patient. Last week was crazy. Uh, so we're back, but it's been two weeks, and a lot of people ask questions about, um, oh, look at Jolie's comes on, and she said, cream cheese and cheesecake is the bomb. Fat, fat, fat. That's, That's a good call. Said. No, um, Jolie's, we're going to be she training She was on Jolie. the show two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, Jolie understands that fat is not bad and, and 
with her brain injury, we tweaked the protocol for her. She's really slick. Jolie's going to be a good coach. I, I'm not sure we're saying ice cream and cereal. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like your thought process, though. So let me ask you the question that a lot of people ask. There's this diet out there called the Mediterranean diet. Right. And so they were asking, kind of based on that, um, people over in France eat a lot of bread and butter. People in Italy eat a lot of pasta. As a matter of fact, I can attest to it. Every meal comes with pasta. And yet they seem to appear to be thinner. I don't know if they're healthier, but they're thinner. And so the question was, does it have a lot to do with the exercise that they're doing? Is it the okay. fact that they're, they're no, set no, no, up no, no, differently? No, no, it has nothing to do with exercise. I, I've interviewed hundreds of marathon runners, a wide diverse group of people that cross the finish line and, and they're still obese even after their marathon training, 20 hours a week running 30, 40, 50 miles a week. So you don't need to go on the treadmill to lose weight. But folks, you gotta Hallelujah. think about, you, folks, you gotta think about this. You gotta think about we're all biochemically unique. If, if we eat the way our great, 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 great grandmothers ate and grandfathers, then we're more genetically determined to eat. You know, we all have, we all have a different microbiome. Our gut flora is different. What diet works for you? Again, we're all, all biochemically unique. Um, when you eat food and it's broken down, there's multiple metabolic functions and um, everybody loses weight just a little differently. So getting a baseline on testing, understanding your metabolism, becoming the CEO of your own health. Oh, I like that. You, CEO. No, of your no, own that, that way you know that, that way you could drill down on this because listen, there we all have different shoe sizes. We all have different genetic makeup. We all start losing our hormonal levels at 30. You know, fat distribution is genetically determined, hormonally regulated. So we start losing our hormones at 30. Women can become estrogen dominant. See the Russ Scali YouTube channel. Men can become estrogen dominant. See the Russ Scali YouTube channel. Wrap your head around that because it's not about calories, folks. It's not about calories. I love that. All right, so let's look at the New York Times because there's like 10 articles in here that are awesome. Uh, the first one at the very top, well, obviously this one, we wanna talk about statins in a bit. But this first one says, why are to be besties? And so it talks about research reveals shared neural response patterns in our social networks. And we were talking about how toxicity um, and how negative people, you don't wanna surround yourselves with that. So talk about how this is actually, how you're wired and how that can make a big impact on your life and your health. Yeah, that, I, I, that's what the article is about. Yeah, so. I, always say, I always say, show me your three friends, I'll show you your health. Yes. Okay, so this is a, this is a, a new form of study that our social network not, not social media, but when you're actually next to somebody, who is that group that you're hanging out with? It comes from a lot of work done by Dr. Sapowski out of Stanford who wrote the book, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. This is called social neuroimmunology, a big word for saying your friends have a lot to do with your health. And you share neural networks with people. When you're around people you, um, you know, that, that, that are engaging, that, that, that you become friends with, that does affect your immune system. I mean, if, if, if women's periods synchronize when they're rooming together in college, then that just opens up the door for all of us can synchronize neurologically. Oh my God, you just put it in a woman's perspective. No, I did. No, I mean, think about That's it. That's smart. You, ever, you, ever, you, you have friends, right? When some of those friends walk into Allegedly. a room, you know, when you, some friends walk into a room, you know, they kind of make you smile, you're looking forward yes. to them. And other friends walk in and you're pinching yourself going, I can't wait to get out of here. How did this happen? <laughs> so, you know, so I'm just saying. So your people have a lot to do with your health. That's considered psycho neuroimmunology or social immunology. How, how, does, how does your peer group affect your health, which is a, a really that hot topic. That is so fascinating. And I cool? think, so think about that, guys. So we, we, you've heard about it a thousand times. You're the sum of the five people you spend, uh, hey Brenda, uh, spend time with. And that doesn't necessarily mean your attitude. It's, it obviously impacts your health and your, your mental and your physical health as well. And there's proof, there's proof of that, studies of that, which I find fascinating. And if you ever look at somebody, you can see a group. I can always look. If there's a group of five people and they all look down, or there's one person in there that's the happy one and the other four don't look great, there's something going on in that exactly, dynamic exactly. that's not healthy no, or, it's cool. or healthy. It depends right. on, on right. where you're at. But I, I do a talk on toxicity, and I, oh, I really believe that the, the more that you hang around toxic people, the more detrimental it is for you in everything that you do. Now we know it's health, but mental health, your success, where you're going in your life, your relationships, both at work and socially and personally at home. Well, think about it. When I was on the SWAT team and I was a, went through the police academy to become a paramedic, 
that that whole social. I'm not shooting down cops. You know, I love a lot of cops are my friends, but that whole that whole social network I was involved with. That, that causes paranoia. Everybody becomes a bad guy. Right. All right, and that's you know that isn't a good way to live. And I and I, I don't want these cops and firemen, paramedics to have heart attacks. So I help them. But I immerse myself in that field, and I kind of looked around. I'm like, this isn't healthy. Now, now when I moved over to the triathlete community, where everybody was motivated out in the sun, that whole community basically saved my life. Right. Because I, I immediately quit drinking because of the community. Right. I immediately was out in the sun more, elevated melatonin levels. I could care less about finishing and racing. It was just the community I was with. I right. didn't realize how much how important it was at the time until now. Right. It was it was a positive community that had a lot. They were all positive toward. But I mean, I would imagine that no matter what community you're in, you're going to find the negative people. So don't say that. Don't think that we're saying these absolutes here. No, no, no. But you you want to pick and choose. You want to find the people that do make you happy Resonate. or make you laugh. Right. Resonates a Resonate great word. One of the things to think about is, folks, we all, in order to stay healthy, I could talk about all the vitamins and all the fancy programs and all the all the testing I'm doing. Our need for affiliation. Our need for affiliation. There's another article in the New York Times that says clinical trials are not being done on 65-year-olds. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, so here. Are the people are, are excluded, often excluded from studies, leaving doctors to guess. All right, so here's the deal. I used to take people into nursing homes, folks, watch them deteriorate. Breaks, breaks my heart in the 80s. And then I got to work in anti-aging centers, training physicians to do the hormonal replacement therapy. In those anti-aging centers from Boca Raton to Beverly Hills, I was, I've been in a lot of them. I got to meet people in their 80s and 90s that were doing the hormonal therapy and they were still riding their bikes around Europe. You know, amazing things were happening. So again, it's really important that all of us form a community because we got 8,000 people a day turning 65 for the next 20 years. Now, according to the New York Times study, you know, they're not a good business model. They're, you know, as long as they're taking medication or they got a chronic illness, that's money. It's sad, right? It's so, so I mean, so what, you know, I want to, number one, I, I want to I wanna improve people's quality of life. I've done it a thousand times. I've got doctors here trained to take care of people over 65. And, and just from my history of watching people deteriorate, I was taking care of my parents, watching them, and I put the brakes you know, on my dad's diabetes, on my mother's dementia, doing these same programs. So I know it can be done, but we need a community. We need people. We have to have it. And we're going to, yeah. we still need to set our date, which we're working on, right? Yeah, we're going to so do that. So first week in May, maybe, is what I'm thinking. But yeah. Well, I promise you after this show, Russ and I will talk, and we're going to put it out there. Um, one of the things we had a lot of questions about, because you talk about running and being a triathlete and an athlete, uh, why you can't just run it off is one of the articles. Mice on a wheel alter. Mice on a wheel alter their behavior in the ways that they burn fewer calories. So talk about that because you, you've you experienced that. You yeah. know this. But I have a lot of friends who run, and I'm not against – well, I personally don't like to run, but I, I, I know it's good – they feel like it's good for them, but they end up with a lot of joint issues, exactly. leg issues, health issues. Uh, and yet, that, so, that is what they feel is bringing them to a healthier point in their life. I think I, I started running because when I got off shift at the, at the police department, the fire department, running emergency calls, I would run and I could clear my head of all the bad stuff I saw. So running for me, being ADD and dyslexic, calmed my brain chemistry down. So I kind of gravitated toward that because i got to be in motion. I can't sit still. Mm -hmm. I would never be able to work in a cubicle in, 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 anywhere. Never. But, 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 but running elevates you know, endorphins and caflins, dynorphins. It's, it's, it's very healthy. But it's not a good weight loss tool because when people start training for a marathon and they increase their, their running, their running causes neurotransmitter imbalances in their brain. And after they get done running you know, six, seven, eight, ten miles, then they end up pounding down the carbohydrates to balance out their brain chemistry. Yes. You know, so I, yes. you know, we were, I was a big carb eater when I was a triathlete. And in 1996, we switched to the ketogenic diet, which is on my YouTube channel, because I, I kept looking around going, why are all these people crossing the finish line but so But don't heavy? they say that you're supposed to eat a lot of carbs, either pre-training or post-training? No, that's all training. I mean, that, that's all changing. Now we've got endurance athletes finishing the one, Western States 100-mile run. We have endurance athletes now going on the high-fat diet. So that whole paradigm is changing. Good. 
You know, and I, I don't, listen, if you want to climb K2 or you want to run the Boston Marathon, I don't shoot that down. I just say, let's do some blood work, let's see where you are, right. and let's do it safely. Because you have to do it safely. And Jen, I love your comment. I call those moves. She said man boobs, I guess, from running. Yeah, you don't want man boobs. That's from elevated estrogen in men. I call it moves. Is that yeah. what that, is that what happens? I just figured it was because I'm not all that active. I, no, no. When you, when you, moves, when, you when you, when uh, you, when you, when you do endurance training, endurance training lowers testosterone in men. It lowers all the hormones in women, and then it lowers your thyroid. So actually, endurance training actually, and you end up putting weight on because your body becomes very, very deficient hormonally. Interesting. So just real quick before we move on to the next one, estrogen slows down the metabolism. If you're estrogen dominant, your thyroid will be impacted. A lot of people are estrogen dominant, and I've got a video on the Russ Scala YouTube channel that talks about men and women and children being estrogen dominant. And, and everything you rub on your skin, folks, like any chemical, can raise estrogen levels. So you could, you could Google right now after the show, Google xenoestrogens in the environment, and you'll see that, you know, scary, that, that the man. sperm count has dropped since the 1950s, and that estrogen has increased because of all the toxins in the environment. And again, this is science. I do a lot of environmental research, folks. I'm not... I'm not saying, you know, I'm yeah, not a conspiracy isn't theorist. Stuff. This is real. All right, so then let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of statin therapy because you and I talked about that. Um, statins in here, and statin drugs usually are um, have to do with cholesterol, right? Is that what statins usually do? So there's a big article in here about healthy people often take the medication to prevent potentially serious problems, but aren't they, in fact, just adding to or creating? potential serious problems by taking the statins? The, folks, there's cardiologists around the world right now that are on the tip of the spear that understand that fat is not bad. 99.9% .9 of the cardiologists think that fat causes heart attacks. They're completely wrong. And again, this I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Fat, we need fat to, to protect our brain. Think about this, folks, just for a second. Let's see if I can paint a graphic for you. Cholesterol is the number one ingredient from fat, saturated fat, that makes up estrogen, testosterone, cortisol, pregnenolone. Cholesterol is the steroid that makes all our hormones in our body. So cholesterol surrounds every lipid bilayer of every cell in our body. Cholesterol makes up 15% of the dry well, weight. How can it be bad? My point. <laughs> so my point is, is like a lot of us drank the Kool-Aid because we went in to see our doctors, and the Seven Nation study done by Ansel Keys in the 1950s. He came up with that study and he pointed the finger at saturated fat and then he said saturated fat caused heart attacks and he was completely wrong. So what can we glean from that, folks? We need fat to protect our heart and our brain. That information is out there. You could Google it. You could watch the TED Talks uh, on, on research on, on, on the fat paradigm that's changing. So, you know, enhance your knowledge about, uh, about the importance of fat in your diet. The ketogenic diet, the high-fat diet is be becoming more and more uh, important. We've got cardiologists in different parts of the world saying, let's tell the people we got it wrong, that fat does not cause heart attacks, it's more sugar that damages the lining of the arteries. So oh, I got to deal with that every day. It's right, so let me ask you, one of the before we, we try to wrap it up, a lot of people asked last time, um, all right, so Russ, what happens if I want to consult with you? What happens if I want to become one of your clients? What's the first thing that you do? You sit down with people and you really drill deeply. So tell them a little bit about how they can reach out to you, that it's definitely something, no matter where you're at in your health process or what you're thinking, um, that obviously Russ can help you. So tell them what that looks like. So folks, you know, because I'm doing this show with Ted, you know, just, uh, he'll, he'll give you my cell phone number, call me, and we could discuss, have a pen and pad out. After these shows, when it's still in my mind and I don't forget, I'll try to answer your questions, okay? I've got physicians here in town that, that can develop programs for us, or I'll just educate you to, so you can ask questions to your own physician and get you or a family member out. I, mean, I do consults from all over the world, a bunch of them from the UK right now. So if you call me, I, I'll get back to you, okay? Just I, I understand that we get calls from, from everybody. I don't, I don't mind him or Ted giving you my cell phone so we can talk about this, okay? Yeah, because I think, I think what you do is, it's hard to, because a lot of people said, 
well, is there a questionnaire he fills out? Well, I don't know that, but I know what he does is he drills deeply and he asks questions and then the more that you answer, the more questions that come up. And what Russ does is he really gets to the nitty gritty. It's not just gonna be your typical medical questionnaire that you fill out and it's very generic. Like he said a million times, it's, um, it's based on your own genetics, right? So everybody's diff biochemically different, right? Exactly. Everybody's biochemically unique, folks. Unique. One, one program, one weight loss program is not going to work for everybody. One medication is not going to work for everybody. Just giving insulin to diabetics is, is going to change. Just giving a statin drug to lower somebody's cholesterol, that's all old school information. So what Ted and I are doing is trying to create a, a community with you guys sharing this critical data so we could this this knowledge can go viral and, and and may help somebody ask their doctor like wait a minute why don't you check my thyroid because i know the low thyroid can damage my heart correct before you put me on a statin drug why don't you check my t3 and t4 levels doc that just that patient just empowered themselves with with uh with knowledge to hold their doctor to a higher standard correct all right so and i get a lot of questions from vegans believe it or not uh, and Jen just asked when I'm a vegan or she said something it's hard to get enough protein right so the vegans I tested a lot of Indian families over the years with my research lab so we you know if you don't get enough protein you're gonna mine nutrients from your own tissue we don't want to do that and again I'm not shooting down vegans I'm just saying if you're gonna go down the vegan route let's make sure that you're getting enough protein and amino acids so you're not mining it out of your own muscle tissue because remember you have to, when DNA unzips on a cellular level, you need protein to make your neurotransmitters. You need protein when you go into level four REM sleep at night and your body releases growth hormone, you need protein right. or, 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 or that's not gonna happen. So again, you know, I work with a lot of vegans and I try to plug in stuff that, you know, that, that, you know, that, that works for them. Sure, and again, it's individual. So what we'll do is we'll, I promise you that in the, in the comments, I will put uh, Russ's cell phone number because that's really the best way to uh, reach you, right? So why why not? Yeah, just have a pen and a pad out, folks, and have your questions together, and I'll, I'll have some dialogue with you, and hopefully I could dispel some myths. Maybe I could help you or a family member, and then whatever I help you with, just share it. Absolutely. All right, so, and then I promise you, uh, Russ and I are going to uh, clean it up in a minute. Like, I'm going to leave with some parting words of wisdom from him. But let's definitely set our time and let's invite them. We've got a couple of weeks and let's really start building these communities. You guys have been so supportive of that. You've messaged me a lot. You've reached out to me a lot personally. Uh, and I think you have a, we have a lot of interest here because people really don't know where to go. They don't know how to get the alternative. They don't know, they know they need personalized medicine but they absolutely don't know how to access it or what to do with it, uh, even if they find it. So uh, any parting words of wisdom from them, for them, anything you wanna leave them with, this has been uh, the, a better body and a pill, not so fast, I love that. I guess my thing for you is there isn't one answer for everyone, which you keep preaching, but it's the truth. And I think people want this one answer. Russ, I just want to take one pill, or Russ, tell me to tell me to run five miles a day, and that's going to solve my problem. And that's absolutely not the answer, I, I, folks. I think together, all of us can raise our educational level because we know the medical system is broken. Um, iatrogenic deaths, deaths caused by the healer, is the third leading cause of death in the United States from our own medical system. Again, not not a conspiracy theorist, just true. Right. So, what can Ted and I do? What can you do? What can we do collectively? to educate or increase your knowledge level to number one, ask the tough questions, understand what blood work you need to order so you can start to monitor your health. Because folks, right. let me just tell you, the, the only ones that are gonna help you get out of the railroad tracks with your health moving forward are, are gonna be small groups like this. Right. Medicine's broken and we're gonna get a lot of bad answers. As you can see, the New York Times article is filled with stuff that we're discussing. So I want you to be safe and, um, yes. and share the knowledge. All right, we love you guys. We'll be back next week. Uh, reach out to us, and then I'm going to post Russ's information uh, in the comments. Uh, we want to help you guys. That's what Russ is here for. Thanks for all the love that you guys showed us. I see lots of hearts going across the board there. Uh, we appreciate it. We know you need help, uh, and we're here to help. Russ is really here to help, and his whole team is here. Like, everybody wants to call Ted today, which I love. Anyway, we're all here to help you. We love you. 
And uh, we'll be here next week, but we'll post all the rest of this information now. And then we're going to get that forum, that community forum, together. And I promise you, by the next episode, we'll have a date and a place. Love you guys. Bye, folks. Bye, babies.